pray, dear Master, for those obsessed with power. For a 15-year-old who would take up arms and kill because in his adolescent mind that is a remedy. We pray for an idiot on the western side of this globe who would contemplate a nuclear option to have his way. And right here in these United States, we pray for those who would exercise an idiot option. Looking to lift one whose background is so sketchy. His character raises more problems than Van Camp has pork and beans. But just because they want control at any cost, the Republican Party will marshal all of its resources behind a Herschel Walker, who has no business whatsoever near the doors of the Senate. Lord, we ask that you please bless and deliver folk who are obsessed with notions of power, that may they come to know there is but one power, and that is you. Your son declared at his ascension that all power is in his hands, and it still is. Lord, we pray for those who are so confused until they see nothing but futility in voting. Open their eyes that they might see, that they might know. Voting is a privilege that many died for, and we ought not Treat it lightly. It is the only sure way to effect peaceful, positive change. And so, Lord, we thank you that you have been good to us. You have blessed, preserved, and kept us one more week's journey. Please continue to find favor with our ventures. Please continue to let your presence overshadow us. Keep us, our families, our friends, our communities, safe from all harm and danger. And we pray, Lord, that soon and very soon Jesus will come and sooner still, we might gather and worship him in ways that reflect the traditions and heritage of our past, all that has brought us thus far by faith. Please bless and remember those who come and go through the doors of this, your house will be called St. Andrews. God, if truly, if you never did anything else for us, we'd have to thank you right now just for Jesus and him crucified, raised from the dead, ascended to sit with you, beckoning us to join him one day. We love you. We praise you. We give your name the glory. In Jesus' name.
Our scripture lesson for this morning is found in the New Testament, the Acts of the Apostles. In the 15th chapter, we'll read verses 36 through 40. And this is how they read in the King James Version of the Bible. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with him, who departed from who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. We read it here in verses 36 through 40. It's found in the 15th chapter, the Acts of the Apostles. So ends the reading of our scripture. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. We now ask our Musicians that will please favor us with two selections as we prepare for today's message.
scripture that was read earlier from the Acts of the Apostles in the 15th chapter, verses 36 through 40. And some days later, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of God and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. I talk before you're hearing today the gift of goodbye. The gift of goodbye. The text comes from the story of Paul and Barnabas. More correctly, we might say it is the story of Barnabas and Paul. Better still, we can say this is the story of John Mark. John Mark. We know him as the author of the Gospel of Mark. Interesting that we know that as the Gospel of Mark, when actually that should have been the Gospel of John. John was his given name. John means graced by God. That was the given name of John Mark. The name Mark actually means consecrated to the god Mars. Very Roman. Very pagan. Let's make this a full-fledged Bible study and see how many of us really knew that the oldest of the Gospels was written by one who is remembered in the text as being named Mark consecrated unto the pagan god Mars. Now let's work with that title, the gift of goodbye. You know, had John Mark, the author of the first gospel, been allowed to continue to journey with Paul, the exploits and adventures of Paul may have come to dominate the message which was to be all about Jesus of Nazareth. As a consequence of goodbye, what we have in the Gospel of Mark is a gospel all about Jesus. The gospel that Mark wrote is a gospel of action. There is a word that appears in that text no less than 41 times. It is translated immediately in most translations. RSV and RSV and IV. In the King James Version, the word is translated straightway. It marks this as a gospel of action, if you pardon the pun. In Mark, we have no nativity scene, no 
genealogy, in Mark's gospel, there are only four parables. But Mark's gospel brims with hope, promise, and good news. Who knows? The gospel of Mark might never have been written had there not been a rift between Barnabas and Paul. Sometimes goodbye leads to good things. Sometimes good things come from goodbye. Now let me set the story in context by telling you a little more about its principles. Much more is revealed in the New Testament about Saul of Tarsus become Paul the Apostle than is told of Barnabas. One theologian declared the New Testament to be about only two things, Jesus and Paul, and what Paul had to say about Jesus. That seems about right. About two-thirds of the New Testament is ascribed to this apostle born out of town. But who was Barnabas? Barnabas was a Levite. He was from Cyprus. Barnabas became one of the prominent disciples in Jerusalem. Barnabas was not even his name. His birth name was Joseph. His birth name meant, may God add, may God increase. The apostles in Jerusalem nicknamed this disciple Joseph Barnabas. The name Barnabas means son of encouragement. They nicknamed him this because he loved to encourage others. That's important. It is important because it was Barnabas who encouraged Paul to become a missionary leader. It was Barnabas, you can read this in the 15th chapter, who partnered with Paul to teach believers at Syrian Antioch. This was the first place where they were called Christian. Here's a side note for you. The name Christian means Christ one, and the name Christian was a term of derision. I'll make it clear. In my lifetime, I remember a time when growing up, if somebody called me black, I mean, the black folk call you black. A fight was likely to ensue. Over the course of a short period of time, black became not a word of derision. Black became an appellation of honor. About the time, oh, y'all know this, who don't know him. About the time James Brown wrote a song, Say It Loud. I'm black and I'm brown. We might never have been called Christian had not Barnabas encouraged Paul to teach the believers there. It was Barnabas who was sent out with Paul to bring relief, famine relief, lifting an offering to take back to the believers in Judea. It was Barnabas who took the lead role with Paul in the first recorded missionary journey of the early church. Now what is all that to say? 
because your question is met with a question. Did you know it was Barnabas who set the career of Paul the Apostle in motion? Barnabas. It was Barnabas who was the advocate before the brethren in Jerusalem of this converted former persecutor of believers. It was Barnabas who mentored Paul. Barnabas making the latter presentable to folk who had every right to be suspicious of him. There might not even have been an apostle Paul without Barnabas. Here's a New Testament twist for you. In Acts, the 12th chapter, the story of Paul and Barnabas begins as the story of Barnabas and Paul. Paul doesn't begin to merit top billing until the end of their story. Now, what is that story? Well, here it is in a nutshell, folks. Paul and Barnabas, actually, Barnabas and Paul, went on a first missionary journey to preach the good news of the gospel, and they carried with them a young man whose name was John Mark. This young man, John Mark, abandoned them, found the work to be too hard, the risk too great. And so the scripture records for us that at Pamphylia, John Mark split. He left them. In our text, as they're preparing to go now on their second missionary journey, a fact-finding mission to see how well the seeds of faith they planted were germinating. We find that Barnabas is all set to inform John Mark of this new venture. Yes, Paul, let's go. I'll tell John Mark so he can get ready to join us. But the text tells us Paul was dead set against John Mark joining them this time because he had abandoned them the first time. What was it that made Barnabas fight so strongly to include John Mark on the trip? Well, Barnabas must have thought doesn't this young man deserve a second chance? I mean, look at yourself, Saul of Tarsus. Don't we serve the God of a second chance? You're a second chance apostle because we serve a second chance God. You see, that's the message last week leading into this week. And it's not an accident. And let me throw in this fun family fact as well. Barnabas was such an advocate of John Mark because John Mark was his nephew. John Mark was the nephew of Barnabas. John Mark was the son of Barnabas' sister. So really, and this kind of confused me as I was putting this together, what we really have might just be a case of blood is thicker than water. Nevertheless, the scripture says that the contention between them was so great until they decided it best to part company. Barnabas went 
went on to go with his nephew, John Mark. The latter, John Mark, becoming as a consequence a protege of Simon called Peter. Oh, it's fun when you connect the dots. I declare it is. Paul goes on to be with Silas. Who knows? Had this goodbye not occurred in chapter 16 in Acts, we might not find Paul and Silas in prison. Remember that story? Going to Derby and Lystra, being accosted by a little slave girl who was, who was possessed by a spirit of divination. Paul drove the spirit out. He and Silas got thrown into prison. You know the story. At midnight, as they were praying and praising, earthquake came. That might have been the story of Paul and Barnabas. Now, Oh, this is getting too good to me. I got to wind this thing up. Uh, what is the gift of goodbye? The gift of goodbye is trusting God enough to believe God to know when enough is enough. It is trusting God enough to know when it's time to move on. Sometimes it's just time to hit the bricks and get to kicking rocks. It is trusting God enough to discover that while we must mind the company we keep, our company is never as important as our purpose. It is discovering that in getting to the ending, there must be some goodbyes along the way. But again, sometimes goodbye leads to some good things. So goodbye must be in the plan of God. Goodbye has to be in God's plan. I've told you before, and it bears worth repeating, that word goodbye is a funny word. Because it's not really a word, it is actually the truncation of a phrase over time. The word goodbye began as the old English phrase, God be with me. Now, this is what the gift of goodbye meant for Paul and Barnabas. Because of their party, the good news of the gospel reached more places sooner. The second journey actually became two journeys. When Barnabas and John Mark went one way, Paul and Silas another. What we see is a part of the mystery, the plan of God. Only God can multiply by divine. Because of the parting of Paul and Barnabas, John Mark would become the protege of one Simon called Peter. Oh, you know these were black folk. I declare too many. You had too many names. You got John Mark. You got Joseph Barnabas. Now you got Simon called Peter. Simon was his given name. Remember, Peter is the name that God gave him at his confession at Caesarea Philippi. Simon called Peter. Simon called the rock. Simon would become the rock of the church because actually what Jesus was calling him in that confession was a rocky. And if you know the story of Peter, then you know what that means. It means, too, that God in Christ Jesus has a sense of humor. Anyway, because of this party, John Mark goes on to become the protege of Simon called Peter. This would allow John Mark to glean from one closest to Jesus. All that would become the heart of his gospel record. And Marx is the oldest of the gospel records. It is indeed the gospel of Mark 
that informs the other two synoptics, Matthew and Luke, which is to say, without the gospel of Mark, there might not be a Matthew or Luke, and had there not been a party of Barnabas and Paul, there might not have been a gospel of Mark. I'll say that one more time, slower and more succinctly. Had Paul and Barnabas not parted, they might not have come to be the gospel of Mark. Now, because of that parting, Paul would also be provided at the end of his life and career an opportunity to show that he had a change of heart, that he no longer had these harsh feelings about John Mark abandoning him in the first missionary journey. How do we know this? Well, we know it because if you go to the second correspondence of Paul to his son in the ministry, Timothy, there we find in the ninth and eleventh verses of the fourth chapter that Paul in his departure time, calls for none other than John Mark to come and be with him. Now, for me, folks, and I'm done, all of this is fascinating because it reveals how God works. It is interesting how we find in these relationships one who received a second chance. A persecutor named Saul of Tarsus. Receiving a chance to become an apostle named Paul. Now came to be one who likewise got to bestow a second chance to a deserter named John Mark. All of this because we serve the God of a second chance. All of this made possible because of the gift of goodbye. Won't you stand across the church? Now what does all this mean? means is trust the one who knows your beginning to also be the one who knows your ending. Trust the God who promised always to be with you to know what is best and to lead and direct you into what is best. I'm not saying that God somehow orchestrated that there be a great argument between these great friends, Barnabas and Paul. And don't worry, because they did become great friends later on. You see, Barnabas became the principal contact with the church at Jerusalem. And we find Paul checking in with the folk there who became his friends. And with his friend, Joseph, called Barnabas. God has a way of making all things work together for good. To those who love him, to those who are the called according to his purpose. That ought to comfort somebody. To know that whatever you might be going through, well, I'll preach this one day. We serve a God of the get through. Nowhere. Are we ever told that God brought folk anywhere and left them? Nowhere. Even when it looks
looks like to our eyes they have come to the end of their journey. God always has a move. Everyone needs a relationship with a God like that. God was able to sort out what we can't. See what we can't. Know what we can't. There may be someone under the sound of my voice now who needs that kind of relationship with God and I'm going to tell you how to get it. All you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. See, those words come from one who wrote to a church at Rome who might not have established that church had Barnabas not encouraged him to go forth. And we invite you to come. As always, if you are in need of a church home, we invite you to make St. Andrews that church home. We invite you to come. still wear your mask and you can watch your distance. We are going to follow the suggestion of our sister Arlene Ware and commend those who want to socially distance to the walk of them. But we're going to open St. Andrew's for worship. That means that Sister Latrenda Easton will continue to broadcast the Sunday school lesson. But the Sunday school lesson will occur right here in the sanctuary Sunday morning. I won't give the time because I'm bound to get it wrong. You know when it is. That will then be followed by our own praise and worship team victory. And we will also be bringing back choir and I know it's going to be filled by all of you out there who had a burning desire to sing for the last two odd years. And so I know you're going to be moving up behind the pool Amen. to join in and make a great big fine choir. Okay? I'm going to send that letter out and let people know we continue to encourage you to be safe. And certainly that means getting all your shots. Get all get every shot they give. I, I, I do that, but uh, I would recommend doing what I did a couple of weeks ago when I took the flu vaccine in one arm and the COVID booster in the other arm. 
and then spent the rest of that week wondering what the world was wrong with me. But uh, take all the shots as you are able to take them and stay safe. Okay. We will continue to be dismissed as uh, ushers will dismiss us. And we hope that you will remember the ministries of St. Andrews on your way out with an offering. And we thank you for being faithful. And I thank you for being obedient. I've not had anyone to mumble or complain about having to wear a mask in here. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for that. I believe that's what's kept you safe. So now we'll see what's up, won't we? Okay, won't you stand now across the church for our doxology and benediction? Praise God for all blessings of God. Thank you. 